Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at Flying Iron Sim Spitfire. There's a Spitfire Mark 9. It is released to their website, not yet on the marketplace and not yet on other locations because they're still working on it as far as I know. But it is available on their website. It uh, costs $28. It's $35 uh, Australian. So Australian dollars. So it depends on the exchange rate for you. But I was interested in it because, of course, I like Spitfires. Who doesn't like Spitfires? Um, it has numerous possible liveries here, as you can see, and two versions. First of all, there's the regular wing version, and then there's the clipped wing version. And so we've got a clipped wing one there, which should be faster and more maneuverable. Uh, so it's the same liveries for uh, that version as well. Uh, but the particular version that I want is this one. Uh, this is the G-IRTY and looking at Wikipedia, uh, this was built in 1943 at Castle Bromwich, I flew 51 combat missions and was restored as the Silver Spitfire by Historic Flying Limited. The first post-restoration flight took place in late June 2019 at Duxford, which is why we are flying out of Duxford here. Uh, it uh, circumnavigated the world. So they flew it around the world and you know how much I like flying around the world. So that attracted me to this particular one. Uh, of course, there are other nice liveries too, but this one is all shiny. So we are going to see about that. One thing that we don't have is a center fuel tank. So I am worried about the range. I mean, if can I fly this around the world? It doesn't seem like it because the Spitfire is not a particularly long range plane. But first things first, how easy is it to get off the runway? Because, and you can see the range here. I just put in all the fuel and that's its range. So yeah, the most limiting thing is the flight from St. John's to Greenland if you want to do the circumnavigation. I mean, we could go from around here and cross, but it's still pretty tight as you can tell. So, yep, going around the world is not going to be easy if I choose to use this plane for it. But, yeah, so I hope they eventually put in a belly tank uh, as an option. But I have a more pressing concern and that's can I get off the runway or land safely? Right, there's a tail dragger with a fairly powerful engine up front, and those are not always conducive to me safely taking off and landing. And that is, I've already tried it out, and I think it is doable, but I still need more practice. Okay, well this is good. Uh, probably we want it in bad weather. This is appropriate. At the very least, I should fly it around Britain. Uh, they did the whole British update with all the new scenery and everything, and this would be a nice plane to fly around in to check it out. Uh, so you can see the cockpit here, and I'll zoom in a bit. Yep, you can see, uh, that's interesting with the pedals like that. Pedal controls. Very good. Uh, one thing is, this light seems a little bit out of place, isn't it? I mean, all the other instruments seem reasonable for the plane. I don't know if uh, toggling the... Well, it makes a sound on the floodlights, but I don't know if it's floodlighting or not. I guess it's bright enough in here already. But yeah, I, I don't know about this, this light here. So... That doesn't seem very World War II-ish, but... <laughs> uh, besides, uh, don't we have another way of checking? I mean, this is the gear handle right here. And it's got a little down thing there, so I don't know if I really need uh, another indicator for the landing gear, but maybe. This is what it looks like outside in the rain. And one thing we should check initially, and it is set properly, is the rudder trim. Oh, well it's set to zero right now. Maybe... oh... I think it's negative point two, but I'm not sure. To counteract the natural tendency to go one way. But that's probably something I have to figure out on. Definitely do not need full throttle to take off, so I'm releasing the park brake, uh, parking brake and throttling to 50% initially. 
I, I haven't done the startup procedure or anything like that. And after we get going, it's tending to the left a bit. And I'll... Oop. Okay, and it's, it's, so it's not very painful as far as getting it off the ground. And we've got gear retraction. And I'm just trimming a bit. So yeah, that's pretty good. We'll see about landing. Sort of nice in the rain in a way. This is a very British day. <laughs> Sorry. Now, I don't know if the engine will like blow up if I keep it at high boost for long enough. They said they had realistic failures of some sorts. Could, uh, the boost is basically the same as the manifold pressure on this. So, I mean not the same number, but same in principle as far as what we're looking at to see if we're pushing it too hard. And 12 is going beyond. I think the the max sustainable is 7 actually. So that's it looking spiffy. And that's me yanking too hard briefly. That's a rainbow. It's not the fastest plane in the world, of course. But style-wise, style-wise, I think the Spitfire has it. <laughs> I don't think. I know the Spitfire has it. I'm only at 75% throttle here. And we can change the propeller pitch to reduce the RPM. And then we can sort of moderate that. I don't know about the mixture, whether... Let's get to a higher altitude and see if the mixture has its appropriate effect. But here we are above the clouds. Not necessarily the best day for sightseeing. Not to be walked on. Walkway forward. Wing looks really good. Best Spitfire wing I've seen. I recall I might have flown the Spitfire in DCS World during a free trial. I don't actually have it, but I think during a free trial I flew it there. But I don't have too much recollection of it. Flying Iron Sim had made a Spitfire for x 11 and I had been tempted by that, but I didn't get it. So they have some experience making the plane. I'm gonna keep it at 12 and see, just just on the off chance that it conks out. But the oil temperature does not seem to be particularly high. Right now it's at 71. I think it can go all the way up to 100. The fuel, you have to click on it to get a reading. And it only reads the bottom tank. So we'll drain the top tank first, in theory, and then the bottom tank. Though, I'm not sure that's implemented exactly because the game is well, I think in the documentation they said that the game doesn't really do that exactly right but I'm unclear about how to judge my fuel at least there is a fuel gauge <laughs> I mean uh, in old planes sometimes that's not necessarily a given the same for the oxygen supply you have to start it up in order to get a reading. Oil causes explosions. Do not use it. Okay, never liked oil myself. <laughs> uh, okay. So far, the plane hasn't complained uh, as far as fuel mixture is concerned. I trust it goes without saying, but in flight sim, the, the guns are inoperant. Okay, let me just uh, sort of listen in or s check the gauges to see if the mixture does anything. 
You can see I'm changing the handle over there. The mixture handle is changing. Can't say I'm seeing much of an effect though. I'm, I trust that if there is a mixture handle, it ought to do something, but... I don't know. I'm not uh, that familiar with mixture in the Spitfire. Doesn't seem to be changing the boost level or anything like that, that's for sure. I'm sure if I put it all the way down, it'll cut off the engine. Let's not do that just yet. Okay, fine. Well, just out of curiosity, I'm just gonna push the engine full on, full RPM, and see if it conks out. So, I'll start a timer. So, I'm monitoring the time here. Well, we've got a little patch of no clouds right here. Interesting. Hello, countryside. Oh, that, is that, that our airfield? Yep, that's Duxford. Okay. So, right around the airfield, we've got a clear patch. That's convenient. So far, I've been at it for four and a half minutes at full power. And it hasn't blown up on me. And nor has the oil temperature changed very much. It's gone down, actually. But maybe it's just cold today. I'm fond of braking planes, but I don't know exactly how to brake this one. We've gone pretty fast in a dive. And I'm pushing the engine to the limit. So we'll see. Interesting sounds. Okay, well, I'm throttling down now. It's been eight, well, nearly eight minutes at full throttle, I think. It doesn't seem prone to braking. Much to my dismay. Oh, wind turbine, wind turbines. Ah. Well, okay. There might be some tall trees around here. Don't know where the rest of the wind turbines are, but they're probably hanging out waiting to skewer me. I wonder if they're actually collidable in the game. I haven't tried them. I mean, I don't make a habit of running into wind turbines myself. Lots of traffic on the highways today. I can't see squat. Is there an airfield around here? Oh, there it is. Don't fly it like this. Okay, we're in line. Sort of sloppy as usual. Let's see, tail dragger landing. Don't press the brakes. <laughs> ah, I need a lot of rudder. Okay, but it's not bad. Okay, lightly tapping brakes. Don't want to flop on my nose, you know. Actually, I'm holding the brakes right now. It's not doing anything too bad. Okay, well, yeah. Well, as far as friendliness for takeoff and landing, it's doable. In other words, I don't have to worry about killing myself every time I try and take off and land, which sometimes with tail draggers, um, that can happen. The flaps are basically on or off and are meant to slow you down. They're, they're more air brakes than flaps, to be honest. Um, they're not how a lot of people think of as flaps, so obviously keep that in mind. I wanted to check whether just dumping the mixture all the way down would kill the engine. It does, okay. I just wanted to check that much out. 
Alright, so there you have it, the Flying Iron Spitfire. I'll have to test what its functional range actually is. But just on that brief flight, we were f flying for more than 25 minutes. Um, that took more than a third of our fuel, so... Yeah... It would be interesting trying to fly around the world without a belly tank. So, I hope someday we get a belly tank. But, for now, there you have it. My test flight with it. And we'll see what I do with it. I think, at least, I should tour Britain with it. And see all the nice sights that they've put in. And check out this update with it. It seems like an appropriate plane to do it with. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.